Hello and welcome to Ag News. Today we're going to have uh, guest Steve Boyles talk to us about bunk management. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Ag News. Today we're going to be talking about bunk management with Steve Boyles at the Ohio State University Animal Science Department. So Steve, welcome. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and how maybe how long you've been with the university before we start all this because we, do, we did have John Grimes here and, and he's been lucky to retire. So uh, he's out there and enjoying the just cattle farming right now. So uh, give us a little bit of information about you real quick and then we'll get into a presentation. Oh, glad to. Thank you. I've been the beef cattle extension specialist at Ohio State University for 27 years. Uh, prior to that, I was seven years at North Dakota State University in a similar position. Uh, but yeah, interacting with producers and uh, trying to spread information about animal sciences. Great, great. Well, you've got something about bunk management here. So let's go ahead and start off. What is a bunk management? Well, the goal is to match the feed we offer to cattle to their appetite how much they want to eat. Some items for good bunk management that we need to consider, you know, how many animals are there, uh, what's the size of the animals, uh, how long have they been on the diet. Those are some of the basics of you might take into consideration in finally making a call on bunk management. Now, Steve, I have a question here. <clears throat> when, what is this pin number and lot number? This is a lot of information. Now, is this a sheet or is this a book? What do we, how, do you, how do we have to manage this stuff? Yeah. Here's an example of one. You don't necessarily have all that information on the sheet. This one, for example, has uh, might has the name of the feedlot, but it also you could put down mark, put a pin number. But this has a you might notice days on feed. Uh, give us an idea. Have these animals been on feed for 30 days, 190 days? That can change how much we expect an increase to occur. And ration number. Uh, whenever I develop diets as a ruminant nutritionist, I don't pick up one diet, say cattle from 500 pounds, and feed the same thing to 1,200 pounds. Their nutrient requirements change, so they might go through eight different configurations of matching their nutrient requirements. So ration number is located there, telling me where where I am in the feeding. So those are some examples of a sheet. You don't necessarily have to have all the information on there on that sheet. Depends on the feed yard that you're working with. Hmm. Makes sense. Um, and one of the things in most uh, pin management or, or bunk scoring is a system of giving numbers to what the uh, feed bunk looks like. And this example is the South Dakota State University bunk scoring system. Uh, it was originally created by Robbie Pritchard at South Dakota State University. And this is an example of that. Uh, a zero to four system, uh, zero meaning no feed in the bunk, uh, a half being you might see some of the, uh, the bunk exposed, uh, one being a th really thin layer of grain, and twos, threes, and fours. In general, those are just more feed in the bunk. Some people even have uh, that zero, they might have it zero minus if that bunk's been uh, uh, empty for more than an hour and a zero plus, uh, if they really want to fine tune it, could mean just one or three kernels in there. So different feed yards may use different systems, but in general, they're going to look, look, look a lot like this one. Now, Steve, I want to ask another question. How often do you score the bunk? This will be done every time the cattle are fed. If it's once a day, it's course then. But a lot of feed yards may be feeding cattle probably twice a day. And that scoring will occur at each time. There'll be an individual that go drive around, think about a large feed yard, uh, and score each one of the pens on what that bunk looks like. That information is relayed back to the feed mill and with that scoring system, it will tell, well, this particular pen needs this much feed 
feed based on that scoring system that has just been relayed uh, to the feed yard. And pictorially, here's what some of that might look like. Like that bunk score zero, uh, very little bit of feed is located in there. The wet spot you see there might be some uh, from the cattle licking the bunk. Uh, and that's where that uh, zero minus, if they're, if they're that way over an hour, in general the feed yard really doesn't want it to be that way. If it's a zero plus, that's probably less than 30 minutes, so it, it's okay in that situation. Now you see that score of a half. Uh, you might notice a little bit more grain in, in that bunk and that's a very desirable score to be at uh, when scoring bunks or you're the bunk caller and uh, you're in charge of determining how much feed to provide. Uh, both of those are acceptable scores. Now as you can imagine as the numbers get bigger there's more feed left in the bunk. There's a bunk score of one and two and in general the more feed that's in the bunk the less desirable it is. Uh, especially with wet feeds like silage, they come out of condition rather rapidly. So we don't want to overfeed because as any feed comes out of condition, it's becoming uh, less palatable. The animals won't eat it. So somebody is going to have to come in there and clean that bunk out to get rid of any stale feed and that is feed that was provided but wasn't consumed and therefore money lost in feeding cattle. Making bunk calls also, there's that number looking at the bunk is important. So using that bunk scoring system. Now what kind of system is this, this 25-50-25 rule you got? Okay. The bunk scoring system was looking at the bunk. Now let's look at the cattle while they're eating. So consider animal behavior. In this example, in the pen on the right, and you look far back, there is a truck that delivers the feed to the feed bunk. Now those cattle don't see that truck at this particular moment. All of them are pretty much hanging back. Now let's look right there. That This happened at the same time, the picture, the truck has moved on. Mm -hmm. And cattle have moved up and are starting to eat at the bunk. You have to look at the whole pen. Now the picture I'm showing you right now is in general just of the feed bunk. But not every space is filled uh, with an animal. That's okay. Remember the 25, 50, 25? We want about 25 percent of the cattle at the bunk when that truck came through. Now, this is behind those cattle, I'll just move my camera over a little bit, behind those cattle, and there's 50, probably uh, almost 50% of the cattle, they're standing up, they're, they're going to eat, but they're not starving. Mm -hmm. They are ready to eat, but they're not starving. And so that's a, quite a number of that, let's call it 50% of that pen. Finally, you look at the way back part on the right hand side. There's cattle that are in the shade. They're standing there. They've eaten and f actually probably relatively recently, so they're full. That's okay. So 25% were really ready to eat when that truck came through. 50%, yeah, it's kind of like, I could eat, uh, are ready to go at some point, but they're not pushing the other cattle. And finally, 25%, maybe they'll come up a little bit later uh, in that, you know, before the next feeding. But then really, that those cattle are dialed in. The, the bunk was relatively clean when the truck came through, and so I would say the bunk collar in this situation is dialed in on those cattle on the bunk, but also on cattle behavior. There's other things that are going to affect this. Uh, weather uh, can affect how cattle are going to eat. Uh, storm rations. Sometimes if uh, if you think about yourself driving down the road and there's a heavy rain or something, you were thinking about pulling off to get something to eat, maybe you just will drive on, depends. Well, if cattle, if they know bad weather is coming in, they'll come up and eat at the bunk pretty hard. Uh, how, why that happens, I can't explain it. But if they particularly want to hit the bunk hard, I may move back a ration that has a little bit more roughage in it 
and then provide that to them just prior to that storm. That way I'm minimizing bloat acidosis. And then as that weather system passes, then I'll get them back up to speed on one of my rations that has a little more grain in it. So other factors uh, besides looking at the bunk, looking at the animals that we have to take into account when doing uh, bunk calling. Other things to uh, consider with uh, looking at the diet is how to mix the feed. Uh, let's say you've got a corn, a corn based diet with uh, protein as a protein supplement. So most of the diet is corn. You don't put all your corn in and then put the soybean meal on top and expect that to be evenly mixed. You put in half the corn, then the soybean meal, get that mixed, then put the second half of the corn and then you mix it again. So you have to think about how you're going to mix a product that's a lot of part of the feed or the whole ration versus something that's smaller. Think also about mineral supplements you're going to put in. You want it through the entire mix. So you have to change the order somewhat. Also, you have to think about particle size. I was just working with somebody this week that was going to use corn gluten pellets, corn gluten feed uh, that's pelleted. But also, looking at the diet, they needed additional calcium. Well, if you put in just a fine particle or uh, like a mineral in on pellets, that stuff's going to fall through the pellets. So we may have to put in, say, a wet feed, a little bit of silage, molasses, kind of, so that'll hold that in suspension. So we have to think about that. So even after those animals finished eating, besides looking at corn kernels, are there a lot of fines in the bottom of the bunk? And that may have to be relayed back to the feed mill that, hey, we need to make some changes to make sure everything we mix in there uh, stays in suspension in the diet. And obviously, uh, we need to feed a diet that is nutritionally adequate uh, for, for the animals. Uh, this is a picture of somebody that knows how to feed cattle. Uh, uh, there's, this is a pin of cattle on the uh, uh, left hand side, the vertical is the dry matter intake of the, of the pin. And on the bottom is the days on feed. Uh, animals when they're young, notice how they increase intake relatively rapidly. They're growing. And the intake continues to go, but as the cattle get older, it's not quite as dramatic. But those cattle are moving up on feed relatively consistently, then the gradual intake, gradual intake, and there at the end, the upper right-hand corner, those cattle are about done. They're eating, but their intake is probably flattening out because their growth has flattened out to a certain degree. Now, this is some students that were in a feedlot class that were told, you're in charge. Uh, there's a pen of cattle. You all call the bunks. Uh, there was probably room for improvement. <laughs> that intake is very, very erratic. Uh, they were underfeeding the cattle at certain times. The cattle got really hungry. And so the next day, uh, they overdid it. And so the cattle went up in intake drastically. Some of those dips could be acidosis. When you overfeed cattle, if they've been starved, the cattle will overeat to compensate. Then they get a bellyache or bloat and acidosis occur. So we don't want to see this sort of, uh, of uh, feed intake. Rather, we want to see something that's relatively consistent like this. And using the tools of bunk management, scoring the bunk, and looking Looking at the cattle, you can reduce those sorts of problems. Now this is a, a result, a final uh, result on animal performance uh, for uh, cattle that were in what we call prescription or that consistent bunk scoring system or uh, what, on the other time ad literum, uh, not using any particular scoring system at all. Uh, Bunk management didn't change the final body weight that much. Average daily gain, not much difference there. You know, why do bunk scoring if there's not much difference there? However, look at dry matter intake. That's about 24 to 26, 27, uh, what, three pounds? You put that across an entire pin of cattle, 
that is money spent or extra feed that had to be spent to get the same result. So feed to gain, uh, the cattle with their prescription, 6.15 pounds of feed was provided to get one pound of gain, whereas almost seven pounds of feed to get one pound of gain, one pound of gain without any sort of system. That's money. Feed efficiency and nutrition, feed efficiency is very, very important. So there you saw at the bottom there, frequency by a slick bunk, as long as you know, less than an hour, uh, works very, very well in uh, improving the profitability of feeding cattle in a feed yard. Well, that's all pretty uh, interesting, Steve. Um, <clears throat> as as a uh, bunk manager, what's uh, let, let's 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 call it experience. How, how, you know, you, you, a person goes out and you just start doing this, like you you had your students or that student. Mm -hmm. um, how long before they realize how the, how to do this? Yeah. You know, it, does it, a person just not going to go out and I mean, they've ha they have to have some experience at this. Um, with your students, did they realize, did, did they finally catch on? Or did you did you have to create? How long did it take? No, no. Uh, <clears throat> uh, all my students, I guarantee, are yeah. smarter than the steers they feed. Oh, I, yeah, <laughs> I, and, I, and I'm sure no. none of them none of them went hungry no. or anything like that. But no. you know how, how that that bar yeah. was. That that's the thing. And <clears throat> it takes a couple of weeks. It takes a couple of weeks. Then they, yeah. they, they then they figure it out. Yeah. So. Ideally, <clears throat> it's uh, that's one of those things you have to just go out and do. Yeah. But uh, doesn't hurt to say ride around. If I'm training a student, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to probably take them out uh, first few times, and so so mm -hmm. let's look at this. What do you see in that bunk? Yeah. And it's that eye showing them visually. Uh, it's one of those things, you know. It's doing by seeing, yep. and yep. it's one of those things mm -hmm. you can't necessarily read it all out of a book exactly. or off of a slide. Exactly. Is uh, right to just go with somebody yeah. sometime and see mm -hmm. how they bunk or, or, or do these bunk calls mm -hmm. and see what they see and yeah we mm -hmm. can get it trained relatively rapidly. That's good, good. Well um, this has been a great topic. I, I can't wait for the next one. Uh, the, really, really good information. So Steve I appreciate it. We will uh, see everybody next time on the, the next segment with uh, Steve.